Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share some words by Oswald Chambers. The first one is titled, The Surrendered Life. I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2, verse 20. To become one with Jesus Christ, a person must be willing not only to give up sin, but also to surrender his whole way of looking at things. Being born again by the Spirit of God means that we must first be willing to let go before we can grasp something else. The first thing we must surrender is all of our pretense or deceit. What our Lord wants us to present to Him is not our goodness, honesty, or our efforts to do better, but real, solid sin. Actually, that is all He can take from us, and what He gives us in exchange for our sin is real, solid righteousness. But we must surrender all pretense that we are anything and give up all our claims of even being worthy of God's consideration. Once we have done that, the Spirit of God will show us what we need to surrender next. Along each step of this process, we will have to give up our claims to our rights to ourselves. Are we willing to surrender our grasp on all that we possess, our desires, and everything else in our lives? Are we ready to be identified with the death of Jesus Christ? We will suffer a sharp, painful disillusionment before we fully surrender. When people really see themselves as the Lord sees them, it is not the terribly offensive sins of the flesh that shock them, but the awful nature of the pride of their own hearts opposing Jesus Christ. When they see themselves in the light of the Lord, the shame, horror, and desperate conviction hit home for them. If you are faced with the question of whether or not to surrender, Make a determination to go on through the crisis, surrendering all that you have and all that you are to Him, and God will then equip you to do all that He requires of you. And that's the end of the first one, and the second one is titled, Turning Back or Walking with Jesus. Do you also want to go away? John 6, verse 67. What a penetrating question. Our Lord's words often hit home for us when he speaks in the simplest way. In spite of the fact that we know who Jesus is, he asks, Do you also want to go away? We must continually maintain an adventurous attitude toward him, despite any potential personal risk. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. John 6, verse 66. They turned back from walking with Jesus, not into sin, but away from him. Many people today are pouring their lives out and working for Jesus Christ, but are not really walking with him. One thing God constantly requires of us is a oneness with Jesus Christ. After being set apart through sanctification, we should discipline our lives spiritually to maintain this intimate oneness. When God gives you a clear determination of His will for you, all your striving to maintain that relationship by some particular method is completely unnecessary. All that is required is to live a natural life of absolute dependence on Jesus Christ. Never try to live your life with God in any other way than His way, and His way means absolute devotion to Him. Showing no concern for the uncertainties that lie ahead is the secret of walking with Jesus. Peter saw in Jesus only someone 
who could minister salvation to him and to the world, but our Lord wants us to be fellow laborers with him. In John 6, verse 70, Jesus lovingly reminded Peter that he was chosen to go with him, and each of us must answer this question for ourselves and no one else. Do you also want to go away? And that's the end of the second one. And the last one I'd like to share with you is titled, Being an Example of His Message. Preach the Word, 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. We are not saved only to be instruments for God, but to be His sons and daughters. He does not turn us into spiritual agents, but into spiritual messengers, and the message must be a part of us. The Son of God wants His own message. Or sorry, the Son of God was His own message. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. John 6, verse 63. As His disciples, our lives must be a holy example of the reality of our message. Even the natural heart of the unsaved will serve if called upon to do so, but it takes a heart broken by conviction of sin, baptized by the Holy Spirit, and crushed into submission to God's purpose to make a person's life a holy example of God's message. There is a difference between giving a testimony and preaching. A preacher is someone who has received the call of God and is determined to use all his energy to proclaim God's truth. God takes us beyond our own aspirations and ideas for our lives and molds and shapes us for his purpose, just as he worked in the disciples' lives after Pentecost. The purpose of Pentecost was not to teach the disciples something, but to make them the incarnation of what they preached, so that they would literally become God's message in the flesh. You shall be witnesses to me. Acts 1 verse 8 Allow God to have complete liberty in your life when you speak. Before God's message can liberate other people, His liberation must first be real in you. Gather your material carefully and then allow God to set your words on fire for His glory. And that's the end of these words. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.